August 15, 1977, a single unexplained radio burst sliced through the static, so powerful, so precise, that astronomer Jerry Eamon marked it, wow. Nearly 50 years later, a third interstellar object, 3i Atlas, hurdles past Mars, carrying a coma of hydrogen and carbon compounds eerily capable of emitting signals at the very frequency that has haunted scientists for decades. For the first time, the story of the connection between 3i Atlas and the WOW signal isn't just a question of what happened, but whether nature itself can rival our wildest hopes for alien contact. If one cosmic traveler can rewrite SETI's greatest mystery, what else have we been missing? On a humid August night in 1977, the Big Ear radio telescope swept across a quiet patch of sky in Sagittarius. The instrument, built by Ohio State University, was tuned to a frequency just above 1420 MHz. The hydrogen line, long considered by radio astronomers to be a universal hailing frequency. For 72 seconds, the readout printer recorded a narrow band burst far stronger than the usual cosmic background. The numbers and letters, 6EQUJ5, stood out in a string of routine data. Days later, Jerry Eamon, reviewing the printouts by hand, circled the anomaly in red and scribbled a single word in the margin. Wow! The signal matched every expectation for an interstellar message. Tightly confined in frequency, precisely at the hydrogen line, and lasting only as long as Big Ear's beam swept over that corner of the sky. No artificial satellite, no known terrestrial interference, no routine cosmic source could account for its profile. Eamon's reaction was a mix of disbelief and scientific rigor. He checked for equipment faults, cross-referenced logs, and led a series of follow-up scans. Nothing like it ever appeared again. The WOW signal became a legend in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a perfect anomaly, singular and unrepeatable, preserved in a faded printout and a moment of human awe. In July 2025, the Atlas survey flagged an object streaking across the sky at a speed no solar system body could match. Calculations confirmed, the trajectory was hyperbolic, unbound by the sun. The minor planet center assigned a name, 3i Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar visitor after Oumuamua and Tupau i Borisov. Unlike its predecessors, this one arrived with a flourish. Early spectroscopic sweeps revealed a coma brighter than expected, laced with carbon dioxide and hydrogen-rich compounds. These signatures set it apart from ordinary comets, hinting at chemistry shaped far beyond the solar system's edge. Its path brought it startlingly close to Mars. For planetary scientists, this was an extraordinary alignment, a rare chance to train an international fleet of instruments on a true interstellar traveler. Orbiters, ground telescopes, and the Perseverance rover all synchronized their observations. The priorities were clear. Chart the composition, clock the rotation, and trace the organic and isotopic fingerprints. Each dataset promised to unlock clues about its origin, its journey, and perhaps its potential to mimic the kind of radio emission that once set the WOW signal apart. For the first time, the mystery wasn't locked in the past. 3i Atlas became a living test case, a cosmic messenger observed in real time, its every move recorded and dissected by a global scientific campaign. Dr. Karen Yan, a dynamical astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics, led the calculations that would decide whether 3 my i atlas deserved more than just passing attention. Her team assembled the full astrometric record, every sky position, every timestamp, every uncertainty, from discovery through Mars flyby. With these, they generated tens of thousands of orbital clones, each one nudged by the faintest measurement error or a hypothetical jet of escaping hydrogen. Using n-body integrators, they rewound the clock nearly 50 years, simulating gravitational tugs from planets, asteroids, and the gentle drift of galactic tides. Each clone traced a possible path across the sky for August 1977. The result? A swirling heat map of probability superimposed on the exact coordinates of the Big Ears beam the night of the WOW signal. The closest approach, 0.3 degrees from the center, fell just outside the main lobe, but well within the broader uncertainty region defined by the telescope's side lobes and calibration envelope. Fewer than 5% of the simulated trajectories passed through the critical overlap, a statistical near miss, yet more than 60% skirted the wider region, suggesting that objects like 3 Maiden Atlas 
may cross the wow zone more often than once thought. These numbers reframed the question. Instead of asking whether 3i i slash atlas was the source, the focus shifted to mechanism. Could any interstellar object, rich in hydrogen, create the kind of transient the big ear recorded? Jan's probabilistic approach justified a new wave of laboratory tests and targeted radio campaigns, moving the debate from singular provenance to recurring cosmic process. October 3, 2025. As 3i slash Atlas swept past Mars, the world's telescopes and orbiters snapped into coordinated action. Perseverance's right mast cam Z captured a 20-frame sequence, each image time-stamped and beamed to Earth through the deep space network. Within minutes of the first frame's appearance on NASA's public archive, an annotated version surfaced on social media, shared by the instrument lead, dissected by amateur astronomers, and overlaid with orbital tracks by citizen scientists. The authenticity check was swift. Time-stamped relay logs, instrument telemetry, and raw image hashes all matched. By noon, the global community had certified the data chain, crowd-verifying the sighting before any agency press release could catch up. Meanwhile, radio observatories locked their beams on the Mars flyby window. The VLA, ALMA, and LOFAR scanned for any sign of a hydrogen line burst. Three narrowband transients flickered in the VLA logs, flagged within hours as likely interference. Two traced to Perseverance's own UHF downlink, one dismissed after failing to appear in parallel arrays. Each candidate was scrutinized, debated, and ultimately ruled out by cross-instrument review. The official campaign summary, posted by the NRAO lead, made it clear. No confirmed cosmological 21-centimeter transient, no repeat of 1977's anomaly. Yet the process itself became a case study in open science. Citizen collectives published independent spectra, sometimes sparking disputes with professionals over method and noise. Hashtags trended, forums lit up, and the Mastcam Z stack, certified in public, dissected in real time, became a touchstone for transparency. In the end, every frame, every radio blip, was weighed by a network of eyes, showing how, in the age of interstellar visitors, discovery is as much about verification as it is about wonder. Inside the Cold Molecular Astrophysics Laboratory at JPL, Researchers recreated the chemistry of a comet's coma under the glare of simulated solar wind. Hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor flowed through a cryogenic chamber, each parameter dialed to match the measured conditions around 3i a atlas Tunable microwave spectrometers swept the 1420 megahertz line, searching for any sign of spontaneous or stimulated emission. The outcome was unambiguous. Across all settings, the instruments recorded no detectable 21-centimeter signal above background. Even with intense ultraviolet pumping and artificially boosted hydrogen densities, the gain remained negative. No masser action, no amplification, only the faintest trace of thermal noise. The numbers told the rest. To match the WOW signal strength, a cometary coma would need a coherent inverted hydrogen path longer than the orbit of Jupiter and an energy input thousands of times greater than solar UV can deliver. Maser theory, run on 3i slash a, TLAS's actual measurements, confirmed the gap. Population inversion fell short by at least four, sometimes seven, orders of magnitude. Peer labs at NASA Ames and Caltech reached the same result. Every attempt to coax a WOW-class burst from cometary hydrogen failed, empirically, theoretically, and by every practical standard. The laboratory verdict was clear. The physics of hydrogen's 21-centimeter line resists natural amplification in comet-scale environments. For the WOW, signal, standard maser mechanisms offer only silence. Magnetar amplification models offered a radically different route to explain transient radio beacons like the WOW signal. In these scenarios, a highly magnetized neutron star rotating far from the solar system could, under rare alignments, boost background hydrogen emission from a cold interstellar cloud into a focused, short-lived burst. The physics is severe, energy budgets soar, and the required geometry is vanishingly precise. Yet unlike cometary masers, magnetar-driven processes have precedent in known astrophysical transients, albeit at different frequencies and durations. Through the fall of 2025, 
a wave of synthesis papers drew sharp boundaries. Dr. Karen Yan's team, alongside international collaborators, compared energy requirements, path lengths, and emission mechanisms for every candidate explanation. Their consensus was clear. Laboratory and field data constrained the hydrogen coma hypothesis to a multi-order of magnitude shortfall. Magnetar amplification survived as a physically distinct, if speculative, possibility, one that could not be ruled out by current evidence. The debate, crystallized in these publications, reached its empirical peak. Every viable mechanism was now quantified, every alternative weighed by the numbers, not the narrative. In 1977, the Big Ear Telescope captured a 72-second burst near the hydrogen line, a signal never repeated and never explained. Nearly 50 years later, the discovery of 3 and I slash Atlas, the third confirmed interstellar object, brought a new wave of global research. Rigorous orbital analysis showed that 3 and I slash Atlas passed within 0.3 degrees of the original WOW coordinates, but could not be definitively linked to the event. Laboratory experiments and maser theory demonstrated that while hydrogen-rich comae can emit weak radio bursts, their power falls far short of the WOW signal strength. Magnetar models remain a distinct, rare alternative, but no conclusive natural source has been confirmed. Today, the WOW signal stands as an unresolved anomaly. The case of 3i slash Atlas proved that nature can mimic some signatures once thought extraordinary, yet full answers elude us. As archival records and new observations continue, the signal's legacy remains, a reminder of how one unexplained moment can shape decades of scientific pursuit.